Welcome to the President's Diary, where we take a look at His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali's week of activities. His Excellency started this week by attending the Seventh-day Adventist Church's annual leadership development conference for South Asian religions at the Regency Hotel. President Ali emphasized the pivotal role of dynamic leadership in promoting harmonious coexistence within a culturally diverse society. Leading in this sphere requires balance in the complex world. If you believe that this is the world in which you can preach the gospel and say this is the gospel or preach your religious text and this is it and that is the end of it, we are wrong. That is not leadership. That is not leadership. That might be reading the scripture, but that is not leadership. So, the first principle I think we have to address is balance. What constitutes balance? And what is the balance that we can bring? President Ali stressed the significance of multiculturalism and its impact on leadership in diverse environments. On Monday, President Ali held a productive meeting with several young Guyanese professionals at State House. Later that day, His Excellency met with the Chief Executive Officer of Ansema Call Group of Companies, Anthony Sapka III, and his team. Discussions included the expansion of ANSA's construction in Guyana and opportunities in manufacturing, automotive, retail, and real estate. On Tuesday, President Ali held bilateral discussions with the Amir of the State of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, and his delegation at State House. Discussions included areas of mutual interest and cooperation. Prior to the meeting, the Amir was graced by a cultural presentation. Additionally, President Ali and the Amir were on hand for the signing of two agreements and a Memorandum of Understanding MOU. President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali has expressed no disappointment about the number of bids received for the country's competitive offshore oil and gas licensing round, which includes 14 oil blocks offshore Guyana. As a matter of fact, in this market, and let us be, let us be uh, very, very open and, and factual about this. We went out on auction at a time when major economies in the world are basically saying to oil producers, we're not going to finance you. They're saying, so you're going to a market where capital is an issue. Raising of capital is an issue. Many countries went to the same market and got no response to their auction. We went to this market with 14 blocks and we got response for eight blocks. We are very happy. The president was at the time responding to questions posed by American journalists during an event on Wednesday in Washington, D.C. His Excellency President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali met with U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo to discuss the expansion of trade and investment between Guyana and the United States of America. Dr. Irfan Ali also met with the chair of the United States of American House Committee on Ways and Means, Jason Smith. His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali said that the New World cannot develop defense strategies without factoring in the effects of climate change, especially in the Latin American and Caribbean region. The President made the statement while presenting at the National Defense University in Washington, D.C. on Thursday afternoon. He explained that in addition to climate security, food and energy security must also be prioritized when developing defense strategies. On Thursday, President Irfan Ali discussed Guyana's role as an emerging global leader at the Atlantic Council Studios. The Guyana energy story is, is, is well known now, not only uh, the, in the petroleum industry, but we are trying to position Guyana as an important uh, hub for regional energy security. Very soon, we are hoping to have our national gas strategy ready, because many people are speaking now about the petroleum component, and that too. Uh, we are leading conversations globally on ensuring that there is a balanced discourse on the issue of the role of, uh, of oil and the role of gas in transitioning to net zero. Because we believe that any conversation on this matter that locks out the producers of oil uh, or uh, investors in gas is not a balanced conversation and not a conversation that can result in the type of policy formulation that is necessary. 
uh, and, and, and we are championing this. That, and we have the credentials to champion it because on the environmental side and on uh, the oil and gas side, we, have, uh, we are strong on, in, in both areas. During his stay, President Ali met with a number of U.S. officials, including United States Senator and Representative from Florida, Marco Rubio, U.S. Democratic Party and Representative of New York, Congressman Gregory Meeks, Sarah Salazar and Congressman Michael McCall, and the Chair of the United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations and Senator of New Jersey, Bob Mendez. Discussions focused on Guyana's massive economic development over the last three years and the country's leadership in climate, energy and food security. The head of state attended the protocolary meeting of the Permanent Council of the Organization of American States, OAS, that was convened to receive him at its headquarters in Washington, D.C. on Friday morning. The president's address to the OAS unequivocally emphasized the imperative of democracy, the rule of law and Guyana's unparalleled global leadership in critical areas such as climate, energy and food security. The president was also able to meet with the U.S. National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, in Washington, D.C. During the meeting, President Ali discussed the strong partnership between Guyana and the United States and reaffirmed Guyana's leadership on global issues. Guyana was applauded for its leadership role, especially in CARICOM and the UN on global issues. Later that evening, President Ali participated in a working luncheon hosted by the executive team of the United States Chambers of Commerce, led by Neil Harrington, the senior vice president of the America's Department. During the engagement in Washington, D.C., investment opportunities including in Guyana's health, education, ICT, infrastructure, and ecotourism sectors. Guyana's global leadership on food, energy, and climate security, especially as it relates to the preservation of forests and expanding the partnership between the chambers and Guyana's local private sector, were discussed. This was the President's Diary, where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thank you for watching. You join us again next time.